change the world together. Welcome to the Snapcast, the podcast for all nonprofit professionals, bringing you interviews and amazing ideas for nonprofit leaders. Hello again, this is Mickey Desai, still on the line with our friend David Summerfleck. David, uh, we were talking about digital marketing strategies for nonprofits and and you know how to not be overridden by just passion, how to apply a real strategy to the overall um, needs and to-do list for digital marketing for nonprofits in general. And can we continue that conversation and 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 what can we tell nonprofits about how to more properly and effectively document their digital marketing strategies. Right. Well, first of all, thank you for for having me back. Um, The first thing I want to say is that passion is great. Okay. Nobody needs to, you know, uh, not have passion. Passion is what what, what brought me to the dance. And and anybody listening to me can can clearly discern that in my voice and what I write, what I do, everything. Um, But it needs to have some structure to it. It needs to have an organization just like the NPO. I mean, you can't just start an NPO and say, we want to help this group of, of, of people or this underserved population, and we're going to do it through telepathy. How are you going to reach them? So uh, passion is, is a wonderful thing, but it needs to have an organized, very deliberate, focused structure. And that digital marketing is a means to an end. It basically uses the company website, the search engine optimization, the social media, the well-written content, the branding, the direction, and all of that together as a collective whole. So there's no disconnect. And, and whoever any organization works with, the the person you work with should have a, a passion and want to be able to bring all of these different tools together in order to achieve a larger business objective, mm-hmm. which could be the nonprofit reaching more of this particular type of disenfranchised group or population in need. Because at the end of the day, they're counting on you, whether they're animals who are beaten and abused or homeless veterans, or 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 you know uh, single mothers, they're counting on you, and you say you care, right? So this is where the rubber meets the road. It behooves you to slow your roll and say, look, I value this cause sufficiently that I'm going to take it seriously and put on my my big boy or my big girl pants here, and not look for how can I get a free website, how cheap can I get this, how much, how much. Instead, focusing in on how can I achieve this objective of getting 30 new subscribers per month or increasing my donorship so I can get the five grand per month that I need minimally in order to function and grow? Mm -hmm. Or how can I solicit more volunteers or have people coming to a a nonprofit event? So you need to work with someone who knows what they're doing mm-hmm. as opposed to someone who's struggling to survive and is going to say, sure, I'll build you a website for $20 or I'll do it for free so I can put it in my portfolio because I have no experience. That doesn't serve the ends. So you're saying there's really not a solid way to DIY your way through this, is there? DIY doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying it because of what I do or because I want money. I don't. I have a host. I'm I'm happily married. I'm semi-retired. If I don't work with another client again, I'll miss the work. Mm-hmm. But I can sit back and work on novels and screenplays and and go sit with my rabbit and, and, and chase after my wife and do whatever she tells me to do. So my point is that, yeah, you've got to have things in a structured order. And um Hit me with that original question again. I got sidetracked. You, there's no good way to DIY. Yeah, the yeah. I've never there. seen it work. Mm-hmm. I've never seen it work. I've, I mean, as a certified business mentor for SCORE, where I was, I, I, I volunteered for them off and on for ten years. I take a break for a couple months and I go back. Mm-hmm. I never talked to a single business owner yet, in all that time, and in my twenty to 30 years in digital marketing. I never met one person yet who has a free or DIY website that actually attracted phone calls and made real tangible resources or money for them. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work, you know, um, and by its very nature, it doesn't. 
you can't start an NPO completely by yourself. At some point, you're going to need to talk to a lawyer or you're going to need to bring in a paid staff member or, you know, at some point money's going to have to change hands or you just can't function. It just doesn't work. You know, on multiple levels, DIY doesn't work for the NPO or for any business entity. You know, I mean, Mm -hmm. the dentist, the doctor, the lawyer, the mechanic, they don't, DIY anything. They went right. to school to learn what they do. But I could just hear, like, I can just imagine a particular person uh, that I'm thinking of, and I can't name names, obviously, but sure. they're going to say a dentist doesn't use a computer to work on my teeth. Whereas no, they I- don't, but the staff yeah. does. The staff yeah. uses the computer and the website to log in and log out, and guess what? Attract you, patient. Yeah. You know, there is, you know, there's actually, I had to get a, sur- I had to have a, a hernia surgery and um, I read reviews online and the reviews were horrifying, right? So I looked up a hernia surgeon, of course, using Google, and I wanted to find the best hernia surgeon I could find. So get, I went to the guy who was number one in Google, number one. Mm-hmm. And I went to him, I said, I got to tell you, I've never seen a doctor in my life, never have such a beautiful website, have so many videos all over his site Mm -hmm. and just really be on Instagram and Facebook and social media up and down, left and right, blog posts about procedures and what you should do to prepare in advance. But he said, well, that's why I'm number one in Google. Yeah. And and guess what? That $5,000 I spent on the website, it brought me you. And guess how much your hernia surgery is going to be? <laughs> right. It ain't going to be five grand. I can tell you that. Because I'm the best there is what I do. Right. And I charge, you know, 25, 30 grand. And thank God the benefits covered it. But you get my larger point. Yes. You know, um, and, I, and I'll tell you a real, another brief, brief example. There was a lawyer I spoke to a couple months ago. And she had called me and, and she said, you know, I'm a lawyer with two different areas of specialty, brilliant woman. I mean, imagine being a lawyer who practices in two different sections, the education required for that. I have the utmost respect for that. Now, at the time, my wife was going through cancer. So I was really, you know, stressed out and tired, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking to her in my office and I said, ma'am, look, you know, just tell me your situation. I'll answer any questions you want. And she said, well, I have a Wix website. I'm paying $2,000 a month with Google AdWords and I'm getting not a single phone call at all. And in a couple of months, I'm going to have to shut it down and go to Starbucks because I I can't go on like this. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, look, I can explain to you why this isn't working. You know, I can explain to you that Wix is a DIY template. It's not real digital marketing. Pardon me for saying it. It's my opinion, but you know, it's based on 20 plus years experience. It's a template. And if you don't know what to program in and you don't know how to properly do it and what to add, it's not going to work for you. Mm-hmm. So I basically told her you're, you're putting good, you know, good money in front of bad money. You're never going to get anywhere with this. I can answer any technical questions you want and I'll be painfully honest with you. Cause I don't really, you know, you're not going to work with me anyway, right. you know, and I'll tell you whatever you want to know. And at the end of the call, she said, I'm more confused than ever before. Huh. I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess I'll do nothing. And that's what she said. And I said, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. You know, God bless you. Have a good day. If you want to, you know, ask any other questions, I'll, I'll be available for you. But I can't make you do what you don't want to do. Right. You know, and that was it. But it was very sad again. But And just another indicator, DIY doesn't work because in order for you to add what you need for it to be listed at the top of Google, you have to already be an expert. Yeah, not only that, exactly, but I'm thinking that a lot of nonprofit managers are are more inclined to spend their time on mission-driven activities and, than they are to – And they to, should be. Yeah, exactly. And, and doing the – Doing and the they should be, media, yeah, and exactly. Media is a full-time yeah, job and, and it, yeah, and it drives me nuts because yeah. it's like the hernia surgeon who charges twenty-five or thirty grand per patient. Mm-hmm. He didn't try to build his own website so he could save a you know a few thousand dollars. What's five grand to him? Right. It's nothing when he's making you know eighty grand a day. Right. Or you know, boy, he sees the value in getting more leads. So if that means spending five thousand, so I can make thirty thousand back 
five or six times a day, that's worth it. That's a great investment. And the funny thing is he had, there were no other hernia surgeons within that region who were number one or number two or number three in Google. You had to really look hard. And where I live in Southwest Florida, most doctors do not use SEO. So the only way to find them is to stop your car and you know go pick up their cards or look them up through the benefits uh, company. Mm -hmm. The same is true for lawyers yep. uh, as well. So it's about see what's the value of this to you. Right. So in, in addition to the recognition, or at least now that we've recognized that it takes uh, at least a part-time presence, if not a full-time presence, to properly run a digital marketing strategy, is what, what's some of the preliminary work that a nonprofit can do to keep them at least on task? Is there like a playbook or? Um, Absolutely, yeah. And, and where would a nonprofit find that information? Well, first of all, I want to, any nonprofit organization listening, if you have specific questions, please don't ask me how much is a website because I it basically it, it depends on what objectives you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. And it's about budgeting realistically. So you're not going to be number one at Google for $200 or for, you know, the cost of, you know, a, a meal out with friends. Right. It just doesn't work that way. And, and most people, most professional digital marketing specialists and web developers do care and they'll prorate things that will work with you realistically. Um, but you, you got to know what you want before you begin. Know your market, know, know your target audience, know your demographics before you make the phone call, before you start looking. Um, and when you do look for that professional person, you want to look for experience, some credentials, you know, references, um, live sites that you can look at. And the most common mistake I see is people saying, I tried DIY, it's not getting me anywhere, everything should be free, I'm stuck in that circular mindset, I can't break free from it. Mm -hmm. Or I hired someone on Craigslist or Fiverr for $200 and I'm furious because I'm not getting the results that I want, will you fix my site? And I'll pay you $50 or something. And so it's like a shoestring yep. circular approach again and it just doesn't work that way. You've got to think like an enterprise level um, organization in order to reach that. So it's kind of like breaking free from the poverty mindset that a lot of NPOs seem to subscribe to, or at least at that startup initiation phase where they're bootstrapping, which mm -hmm. I don't believe works either, to be honest with you. No, I have to agree with you there too. And that's that's a whole other topic for another yeah. day. Yeah. Uh, business planning for nonprofits and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, David, and, yeah, and I've know. been there too. You know, <laughs> David, this has been great. And uh, once again, I'm afraid we're running out of time because there's just so much to talk about. Um, again, if a if a if an individual or a nonprofit wanted to be in touch with you for any reason, how would they do that? Absolutely, I'm always happy to answer questions that are serious and and, and purposeful. Uh, I'm not going to ignore that. So you can just go to, you know, Google or the address bar and just type in dms.blue or www.dms.blue, and you can call my office at 424-DAVID-01, and that is my Google Voice number. If you leave a message for me, I'll get it as an email, and I will text you back or, or email you back and say, hey, I got your message. What can I do to help you? Fantastic. David, thank you for joining us on this episode of the Nonprofit Snapcast, and I, I hope we can do this again sometime in the future. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And to our listeners, thank you for joining us, uh, and we will be back again in about a week. Hope you're having a good one.